Hey, this is Carl from electricbikeblog.com and I'm here to show you guys the stove that we built for about $3,000 with about 250 man hours of labor, which is just pretty much the coolest stove I've ever seen and ever used. So my wife has chemical sensitivities and she used to use a normal uh, wood stove and the stove basically could only run with the flue all the way open so we were throwing wood in there at a tremendous rate and it was just burning really hot but it wasn't smoking and there was no smoke around the house and we started looking for alternatives for some way we could heat our home without having to deal with uh, a normal wood stove and we discovered this com company called Crossfire Stoves in Canada and they make a very special kind of stove it's similar to a Russian stove or a Finnish stove, <clears throat> which is a very efficient stove type, where basically what happens is you heat up your, your wood and the flue gases and it gets stored in the top chamber of the stove and it holds all of the really hot flue gases and then there is an, at very low, right about here, the, the cold air kind of goes up the stove pipe and out. And so uh, these stoves typically have a very small window or no window at all and the crossfire is very different in that it has a large glass window so that you can get a lot of the heat you get about 20 or 30 percent or more of the heat when you're burning it right into the room so we called John who makes these stoves and, and, and explained the predicament to him and he had a used stove that he had put together for a show where he had put it together just to burn it during a, uh, a building show and, and then had taken it apart. And we got a pretty good deal on it. And I actually drove all the way up to Canada to pick it up, which saved us about $800 in shipping. The whole stove uh, weighed about 2,500 pounds. And it basically arrives like a set of Lego blocks you have to put together. So to build this, the first thing we did was we had to build the base, which we made out of just concrete block. And we put the concrete blocks and there's a there's an ash chamber down at the bottom here. And we have a little door to clean out the ashes with right here. And that's one of the things that's important. You'll notice when the stove has problems, a lot of times it's because the ash cleaner has clogged the air intake. And the other thing is you have to build a special air intake. So you can see right here, we've got a six inch air intake that goes to the outside world and it's flexible hose and that goes right into the ash dump and that feeds the air. So this is a closed system. It also has a valve on it. So once there's no more flame, we turn this valve right here like this and that shuts air off to the stove. And that was something that I custom built out of just a piece of copper pipe we had laying around. I basically cut a slit in the copper pipe and then stuck a, uh, took a piece of wood that I cut that was the same size as the six inch PVC pipe. And then I took Reflectex that was slightly bigger than the pipe and I glued it on both sides of the piece of wood. So there's a piece of wood in here that's uh, like this. And then when you turn it, the piece of wood is like that. It's a circular piece of wood and the Reflectex pretty much completely seals and blocks off that six inch space. And because the fire burns very hot, it'll burn within about an hour or two of lighting it. Basically, you put the wood in there and it lights, it all burns up, and then you just damp down that and you damp down the flue, which is on the other side, which I'll show you. And then you store all the heat in there. And usually we burn it only once a day. Sometimes we burn it twice a day. So after building up the bottom with the ash dump and the concrete blocks, we had to pour a slab and that we basically made a form. So there's a piece of metal, scrap metal underneath this, which you can kind of see down here. I just had some scrap metal sitting around and then uh, we put a, a lip on it on the front and then just uh, poured a bunch of concrete that we mixed in our concrete mixer with a lot of aggregate and then we, we polished it down when we were all done and you can see our concrete mixer out here which has mixed probably a thousand or two thousand loads of concrete uh, for, for and lime and different things and then what we did for decoration at the end is we put uh, some mortar 
on the sides and then, and then have the rocks basically hiding the concrete block because it looks a lot more attractive. Now this is the, over here you have the flue right here and that comes with the kit and it's a steel box. And then uh, this is the flue clean out. So this is the chimney clean out. Now we actually sealed it with some high temperature silicone right here around the edges because this fire burns so hot and so clean that we'll probably never have to clean out the, the creosote. So you can see right now it's going full blast and the pipe is, you can actually touch the pipe. I'm touching the pipe and it doesn't really burn you. So uh, it's pretty crazy how cool the pipe stays. <clears throat> and you can also see uh, there's some cracks here. So uh, one of the things is when you put the kit together, you cover the whole kit with cardboard and then you do layers of stuff on top of the cardboard. So uh, we did metal mesh first to kind of hold the form. And then we just started layering up. We did, uh, I think, two layers of concrete. And then on top of that, we did the, the lime and clay mix that you see on the top that makes a really nice finish. And then uh, we used some mica flakes on the very last uh, layer, which makes a really nice reflective sort of coating. And I would say with this, with this stove, we're heating uh, burning about half the amount of wood we were burning before and the house is probably 10 degrees warmer than with a wood stove and then up here we have a small oven now unfortunately this oven never really gets hot enough uh, to cook anything in but it works good as a warming oven and we have a, a large pet rock we have that we can take into bed with us and it's it's quite amazing because the rock ends up storing a tremendous amount of heat we have to wrap it in a blanket so it doesn't burn us. And if we put it in the bed in the winter time, usually in the morning, the bed is so hot under the covers, it's like we have to take the rock out because it's just too hot. And that's staying in our bed all night long. So the idea with this is it's a giant thermal battery. And so the whole mass of this is probably uh, 10 or 12,000 pounds. And it stores a tremendous amount of heat that it slowly lets out for the whole day. But really the best part of this system is that you don't ever open the stove, you don't ever mess with the wood, you don't ever babysit it. Um, it just sort of goes and goes. And I just can't recommend it highly enough. So the other thing is that when we, before we actually installed the kit, we weren't really sure where we wanted to put it and how we want it oriented. So we built a giant cardboard mock-up, which was really cute and I even drew little flames on it. And we put it in different locations and we kind of moved it around to kind of figure out where we wanted our stove to be. And this is what we ended up with. And then we ended up <clears throat> building stairs behind it. Now you can see the stairs are very close. Um, and really the only reason we can do this is because we ended up putting ceramic wool, about two inches of ceramic wool on the back of the unit underneath the, the clay. Um, and that means that the back never gets hot at all. I mean, it's slightly warmer than room temperature. We also put the ceramic wool on the top. Um, and the top also is, stays incredibly, incredibly cool. So we really wanted all the heat on the stove to come right out into the main room and heat our home. So thanks so much for watching and good luck with whatever you do, 250 hours of work it took us and we paid about $3,000 all in.